Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to How To In 5 and Reviews. And this is my review of the Honda GL1800 Goldwing. If you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. And what we're going to do today is a pretty comprehensive review of the bike. I'm going to run it on the bitumen in the city, um, on long distance. I even put it on the dirt tracks. I've lived with this bike now for about a month and I can tell you, I absolutely love it. I think one of the first things that gropes you with the Goldwing is they're just such a good looking bike. Everything seems to be in the right place, they're the right size, and this bike attracts so much attention when I pull up somewhere and people want to come and have a chat with you. And that's always nice, you know, people want to have a chat about your bike. The Goldwing that I'm riding here today is an 07 model. You would expect to pay about a quarter to a third the cost of new, well certainly here in Australia anyway, and primarily my channel is about used bike reviews. Buying new doesn't fit everyone's budget, or maybe you just don't want to have that amount of money tied up in a new motorcycle, and I can understand that. I think I said in the beginning there that I've had this bike for about a month. It's probably closer to two months. And one of the things I have found since owning the Goldwing is the support network of Goldwing owners is massive, probably bigger than any other motorcycle that I have ever owned. And I have been riding now for almost 50 years and I'm by no means an expert on the Goldwing. It is a steep learning curve but it is a learning curve that I'm really enjoying. I think initially I thought Goldwings were just big, heavy, long distance bikes. I could not have been further from the truth. Yes, they fit that bill perfectly, but if you want to get a bit heavy handed with that right hand, they can really hustle. These bikes are quick. They have a big motor, they have a low center of gravity, and they can be a very exciting bike to ride. So what we're going to look at in this video is basically what it is like to live with the Goldwing on a daily basis, or certainly my daily, weekly basis. I do a lot of dirt road riding or unsealed road riding, so we'll have a close look at that. We'll look at the features of the Goldwing, and we'll also have a look at it from a passenger's perspective, because that is very important. A lot of Goldwing riders ride two up and do a lot of long distance touring on their bikes. So let's hop into it have a bit of a look and uh, yeah, we'll come up with a summary at the end. Powering the big gold wing is this beautiful flat six motor. Oh, it's still warm <laughs> because I've just put the bike here. Uh, beautiful big flat six, in other words, a box of six. So three cylinders coming this way, three going the other way, like the configuration that you'd have, um, I guess in a Porsche or something of that nature. It's 1800 cc or 1832 cc's to be exact. That's 112 cubic inches. That is as big as what is in some motor cars. Um, it produces 118 horsepower. So it's not the most powerful motor in the world, but it's also, um, I mean, it's plenty enough power to move this big bike along and she'll go from zero up to 200 kilometers there, 125 mile an hour, pretty, pretty straightforward. So. It's not bad, it's got a heap of torque, 167 newton meters or 121 foot pounds. Plenty enough to haul this bike, but I, I think one of the big pluses with this motor, it's just so beautifully smooth. It is quiet, it is smooth, and I never thought I would say that about a motor, and actually that's more the exhaust. It is so quiet, so smooth, um, it makes it an absolute pleasure when you're doing the long distance hauls. As far as the instrument panel or dashboard, whatever you want to call it, and the switches and dials, everything is backlit. So it's nice and simple, it's easy to see. And I mean, most of the time you know these things by feel, but um, yeah, lovely being backlit. Headlights are terrific from outside the bike. Um, I mean, you'd have to be a total idiot to run into the back of one of these bikes. They are well lit up. I can't actually get my foot under the brake light here but they are well lit up from the rear. They are a pretty easy bike to see. You can see you've got the side indicators as well as the ones on the mirror facing to the front. Headlights are good. Um, little fog driving lights, whatever you want to call them down low. 
a very well lit bike. It has an 18 inch front wheel, takes a 13070 tire, and um, you've got three piston calipers under there with ABS. And while I talk about ABS, in this year for this bike, and there was a few years here, I think, where it was an option, and you just have to be careful. Now, ABS is written on that front chrome cover just there, but that doesn't actually mean it's got ABS. It means the chrome cover has got ABS on there. So if you're looking for one that's advertised with ABS, make sure you just throw your head under the back of the bike. You can see the ABS ring that I've just circled here um, because anyone can pop a cover on the front of it. As I said, three piston calipers, 18 inch front wheel, and I find this front wheel really good on the dirt roads. If you've seen my previous videos where I do a lot of dirt road riding and corrugations and things. The 18 just seems to handle it pretty well. It's got the little mudguard drop down section on the back of it there. Um, I'm not overly fond of those chrome covers and I will probably remove them because I get a little bit of gravel caught in them and I do like to visually be able to have a look at the caliper and just check there's no weeping or anything from a piston coming from there. The right hand caliper is linked through to the back brake. So when you put your foot on the back brake itself, it will send a little bit of braking through to the right hand caliper. So you will find you will wear your right hand pads sooner, I would imagine. But yeah, look, a good braking and wheel size combination. One of the big surprises for me, I think, is riding the Goldwing in the city. I had it in my mind that, look, they are way too big as a city bike. I could not have been further from the truth. They are a simple bike to live with in the city. You can filter down through your traffic. The, the mirrors are the widest part of the bike. The panniers are in narrow. When you get to the front of the row, the lights go green. You can pull it away from the lights. There's not a lot of cars that are going to keep up with you. When you get into the tighter sections, they turn in more than adequate, as good as anything else that I've ridden. And one of the big things that I found on the Goldwing is just how simple they are to do a U-turn or a hook turn, whatever you want to call it. I basically just put it on full lock, feather the clutch, a little bit of throttle in there, and she will turn. I'm not sure what it is in feet, but they certainly turn quite tight. Uh, I'll do it once again here where I come down. Now this section is fairly narrow. There's not a lot of room to move here. Just spin it around full lock. I high side the body, feather that clutch, and they turn very simply. Um, I thought maybe they wouldn't maneuver that well. In and amongst other bikes, you can basically stay with the bikes and filter down through the traffic. But you've got the advantage that you carry all of your stuff on the bike. Now, you look at this lad here on the Harley, he can't carry anything on that bike. On the Goldwing, oh, there's an R18 there as well. Um, on the Goldwing, you can put all of your gear in the panniers. And of course, when you get to your destination, take your helmet off, put it into the trunk itself. It just makes for, well, what I think, pretty easy operation in and around town. It's nice and quiet, so you don't attract the attention of those that, well, those that you don't want to attract their attention. That's always a good thing. It has a decent horn on it. And when you pull in for a coffee, you mess up your entry. Rather than having to shuffle around, put it in reverse and just reverse back into your park. In the cockpit on the Goldwing, it's a pretty special place to be. And I'll briefly run through what each of the instruments do. I won't take too long on this because it'll drag on, but um, let's have a quick look at what everything does. On the right hand side, you've got your kill switch up on top, the normal rotating kill switch. If you don't use the key, you've got your cruise control on and off, electronic cruise control, set, resume. Actually, I did find when I first got this, there's a bit of a lag when you hit the set button. Uh, but if you hit the set, then the resume straight away, there doesn't appear to be any lag. Uh, that's nice and simple to use. Electric reverse, so you 
turn on the reverse, a little indicator light comes up on the panel itself, and then you just push the starter button. So that's the start and also the reverse when you're in reverse. Um, it looks a bit confusing, but it, it's actually really simple to use. And while we're on this side, um, I'll just grab the key out of there. You've got a little locking glove box on this side. This is a key operated one. I've got a 12 volt outlet in there. So if you've got your wallet and personal things that you don't want people to, uh, to have a nose yet, that's nice and handy to have. And also down, this one's fitted with the Honda volt gauge. So um, now I would say because the previous owner towed with this one and he had uh, batteries and whatnot in his trailer, he's fitted up with the volt gauge. That's good. The mirrors are crystal clear. Um, they are so clear, it is amazing. Also, if I pull the bar around here, this little lever here, you lift it up, you can put your windscreen up and down. It's a manually operated windscreen, but um, yeah, look, I have it in the highest position for my size, but um, yeah, pretty straightforward to use. The left-hand grip looks a little more confusing, but this is basically the operation for your CB radio. This bike is fitted with the CB. Um, I haven't used it at this stage, but uh, that's all your channels, up and down, squelch, volume, etc. for your CB. High beam, low beam is there, and also your flash is there. Uh, indicators on here, and they are self-cancelling indicators, which is good. Um, put the ignition on, and one thing I love about this bike, it's got a proper horn fitted. So unlike the little eh -eh horns, it's, it's a proper horn, which is terrific, especially with the amount of wildlife we have here in Australia, if you want to get it off the road. And of course, those motorists that want to, I don't know, somehow just not see you on the road. Uh, volume switch for your radio here. Oh, and your CD. This one hasn't got CD player in it. You have a mute down here. So if you're listening to the radio, Oh, you can hear it's on in the background there. If you're listening to the radio while you're riding along and you get a phone call, if you've got Bluetooth fitted, um, that allows you to mute the radio. And if I just bring the camera down a little bit further, this is for the old manual type intercom system to go through to your helmet. As I said, I've got Bluetooth in mine and don't use it, but there's one of these plugs front and rear of the bike for that setup. I have fitted my phone on here. I just have the quad lock mount that I mounted to this little glove box lid. Um, but push that and up she goes. There is another little cubby hole in there. It's got the MP3 player wire bizzo in there and a little card holder, but that one's not lockable. So you wanna be careful what you, what you put in that one. The operation of the stereo is mainly done from here. As we mentioned, you've got a volume switch over this side here, but it looks a bit confusing, but it's really not. It's basically AM, FM, the presets for your channels. You've also got a dial operation there for your volume. And every time you do something here or here, it is reflected up on this screen here, and you may or may not be able to see that winding up and down the numbers in the volume. It's pretty straightforward to follow if you want to use the CB radio or you push the CB button, etc. So um, nice little embroidered or whatever, no, no, embroidered, that's the wrong word, but a little embossed gold wing on the dash. You've got your seat heater operation from here. That's for the rider's seat and your front grips on here. You have a display info. What is it? It's 16 degrees there at the moment. That screen then disappears and it goes back to your radio and main information screen. The instrument panel itself, or the dashboard itself, to me looks like it's out of a Honda car. You've got your temperature gauge on that side, empty full here for your fuel, speedometer, speedo, and your taco. There's not too much information there um, to get you all blinded. It's pretty simple to use. Down on your left side panel, so here's where your left knee would be, you've got your headlight adjuster. So if you're carrying a lot of weight on the back of the bike, you can adjust the headlights to get the, I don't know if you can hear the little motor going up and down to get the beam just right, so you're not blinding people coming the other way. Hazard lights on here, um, your suspension up and down, so you can adjust. Let's say you're carrying two people, you wanna put a bit more height in the back of the bike. Don't know if you can hear that going up and down. That's reflected on the screen. 
so as you're not having to look for the right sweet spot uh, if you ride solo and then with a passenger or loaded etc you've got two memories so you can have a memory for solo and a memory for two people it just saves you hunting through there are your little spotlights uh, or not really spotlights are they driving lights down on the front the Goldwing has six speakers, um, one either side of the rear seat here, of course, another four at the front, they're 80 watters. The antennas on the bike are the, this is the radio antenna, and to put them down, you just lift and they roll forward, lift that one, roll it forward. That allows you to pull a cover over the bike if it's spending the night outside. To put the antennas back, just lift and they spring back into position, nice and simple, no spanners, no Allen keys or screwdrivers. If you're new to Gold Wings, or certainly this era of Gold Wings, this may be something that you've not seen before. I certainly haven't had it on a bike previously. It's a little door that opens and closes like such. Now you can see it's just in front of the brake pedal. Up on the dashboard, there is a slide lever open, close, nice and simple. There's no getting down to do it on the ground or anything. You just open and close it, and what it does Hot air comes out from in the engine compartment there or over the exhaust manifolds and blows onto your feet, keeps them nice and warm. Initially, I wasn't putting my feet in the right position. Once I learnt where to put them, it is lovely to keep your boots warm. The front forks are 45 mil in diameter. They've got about five and a half inches, 140 odd mil of travel, more than adequate for this bike and what it is designed to do. Um, look, they're all right, they give you a nice, comfortable soft ride they're the traditional style of fork where um, uh, the actual chambers are at the bottom the shafts are at the top they do have an anti-dive setup mounted in them we're on the uh, which side am i looking on the left hand side down here there is a separate i'll call it slave cylinder that when the the forks start to compress it pumps fluid back into the leg to save the bike diving on the front yeah, look, it's all right, yeah. Look, it's okay, I guess, but I can see it loading up the fork seal on the left-hand side as time progresses. But they are quite adequate for this bike. They're not race bike forks, but of course, they're not designed to be. They're designed to give you that beautiful, cushy ride that you get out of this big tourer. Some of the roads in my part of the world, well, let's say they're pretty average to say the least. This is a B road. I've even got complete sections of bitumen missing. And look, the suspension really works well. The seats are second to none from any bike that I have owned. They are pure luxury. You've got heated section down through the bottom here. The lumbar is heated. The bottom section of the back seat and the top section up here is heated. Um, this has the optional backrest on it. And I'll be honest, when I first got it, it was a bit of a challenge getting on and off the bike, but I've now worked that out. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be without it. It is just superb to ride on. But riding on a gold wing really is rolls royce luxury down underneath the bike i'm on the rear wheel here on the left hand side and there are 16 inch alloy rim it runs a 180 60 r16 tire and single sided swing arm so nice and simple to undo the the nuts or lugs whatever you want to call them to get the the rear wheel off you do have to lay the bike over on the side but very neat very tidy you've got the side mounted uh, valve down there so that's fairly straightforward to get to over on the other side of the bike now gee i could have cleaned it couldn't i but never mind um you've got a so i'm on the right hand side of the bike now you've got a 316 mil brake rotor that's about 12 and a half inches another three piston caliper on the back and i have a friend who was a honda mechanic many many years ago and even he was amazed at how simple it is to do the brake pad change on this you've got the abs ring in there the final drive is shaft so no chains or anything to worry about and when you remove the wheel as we saw on the other side it comes out and all of this mechanism the shaft the caliper the disc everything stays on the bike roll-on acceleration is great for overtaking and that sort of thing and you know from naught to 60 mile an hour or 100 kilometers an hour it's no slouch either
I know putting a big bike like this on the centre stand, it's 900 odd pound or a little over, a little over 400 kilos, can seem a little intimidating, but Honda have got the mechanism or the leverage angles and everything worked out just right. So to pop this one on the centre stand, I'm on the side stand now, just pop up the running board, stand the bike up, put your foot straight on the lever, and basically just put all of your weight on it, lift with this right one, hold the left handle, and up it goes. It's really not that hard. The Goldwing is a liquid cooled bike, so uh, motorcycle, so um, one little radiator either side of the bike, very similar to my Tenere and the Can-Am, where um, the air just basically flows in through the front and pushes out through the side of the radiator and gets expelled out to the side of the bike. There are a couple of electric thermo fans, one either side. So when you're moving slowly in the traffic or you know at traffic lights or in the city, you will hear the little fans come on until you get moving again and the air gets pushed through the radiators. This bike never seems to get hot. And one of the advantages of side mounted radiators, and I've mentioned it in my other videos, is that they're not subject to stone damage and getting clogged with the bugs, etc. Goldwing has a wet multi-plate clutch um, down in here, and it's only a five-speed box. And initially I thought, oh, gee, only five-speed. Um, but the top gear or fifth gear is an overdrive, and I think it's about 0.67 or 0.68 to one. There's a little indicator light that comes on up on the uh, the instrument panel itself to tell you you're, you're in overdrive. And it, it's more than adequate. Um, this sits along, I think the sweet spot for this bike is around that 140, uh, around that 90 mile an hour. Um, it just seems to sit nice. I mean, look, it'll go right up past 200 kilometers an hour, 125 mile an hour. But um, the sweet, oh, you'll start to suck the juice then, I might add, uh, as in the fuel going through it. It's a low compression ratio, so you don't have to run high. When I say low, I think it's about 9.8 to 1. So you don't have to run the high octane fuels, which is good because in Australia, they work out about um, oh, a good 20 to 30 cents more expensive per litre. So um, you can run it on the standard fuel. Of course, always refer to your books. Have a look at what's in your books as to what the correct fuel is for a motorbike. Um, you read all sorts of stories, but the people that make these things, Mr. Honda, um, they spend millions of dollars getting computers and fuel injection systems, which this bike is, by the way, fuel injected. Um, if the books say run it on a certain octane of fuel, there's a reason that's printed in the books. So, um, but yeah, there you go. That's the gearbox. As far as checking your oil is concerned, the oil dipstick is on the right hand side of the bike here under this chrome cover. So there's a little spot there you can just get your finger in, give that a pull, pop that cover off, slide it back, and there is your dipstick there. Just a standard old dipstick, nice and simple. Undo that, and there's your oil down in there, and you can check your levels. Um, this, so far, hasn't used any oil at all, actually, since I bought it. It's pretty straightforward and simple. I wished I could say the same, I might add, about the air filter. That is far more in-depth. There's a lot of panel work that has to be removed. Fortunately, it's a decent big air filter. This one's fitted with a K&N, so you don't have to do that anywhere near as often. But I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube clips that can show you how to do your air filter. Riding two up on the Goldwing is, look, it's super simple. In fact, it really doesn't feel a lot different at all. Um, you can adjust the rear suspension up with that little dial on the left-hand side there. So you can bring it up a little bit firmer to account for a second person on the back. You can see the legs here are tucked in behind the wind flow of the fairing. So you're, you're nice and protected. It handles the same. Uh, Power-wise, well, you just do not notice any difference. And I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's a 1800cc uh, motor. There's an enormous amount of torque and horsepower there. As far as mounting and dismounting two up, I have found the best way to do that is basically when you come to a stop to 
stand as the rider, move your body forward, get really friendly with the uh, stereo area there, and just let your passenger roll their armrest out of the road and step off the bike. It stays nice and stable because all of that weight is down low. And I use the same procedure for mounting up with two people also. And of course the Goldwing is not all about the rider. It is built for two. So let's get an idea of what Amy thinks of riding on the back of the Goldwing. Oh, it's so comfortable. Um, look, drink cup holder, um, armrests, wrap around seat. Look at that. You just sit right back in it. It's so comfortable. Heated seats, heated on the back and underneath. And I've got my own little dial here. I can turn it on and off as I like. Um, little compartments either side the most comfortable bike I've ever sat on the back of by far and also the way it wraps around you you find yourself leaning back on it more because other bikes that I've been on the back of slap you on the back they seem to vibrate a lot and you can't lean on them very much um, whereas that's not an issue on this bike it just it just cradles you beautifully and another thing when the rider needs to accelerate fast and puts the throttle on quickly to overtake or something you don't have to worry about grabbing onto them all the time because you're actually you've got the confidence to lean back and let the bike hold you securely so much so much better a much different riding experience on the back of any other bike i've been on so you would give the gold wing the big thumbs up yeah absolutely to access the trunk and the two side panniers, there are three levers underneath the top box itself. And initially I thought, well, they were a bit hard to see, but you don't need to see them. Uh, you just put your hand under and feel for them. Pull the left lever, it will open the left hand pannier. Pull the right lever to open the right pannier and pull the centre one to open the trunk itself. It's neat, tidy, out of the road, and it keeps the pannier lids nice and clean without having any physical buttons on there. There is a, uh, a keyhole in the trunk just there, um, although you don't really use that because you have remote central locking, but it is there, I guess, if ever you need it. There are a couple of little helmet holders, helmet locks, there's a slider within the trunk and you can open them and put your helmets on the outside if you wish. It's very neat, very tidy. On the trunk lid itself, it's got the optional color-coded rear spoiler with the eye-level brake light. Gee, I sound like Mrs. Bouquet. And will you please get off my white slimline telephone with last number redial? Ah, oh, if you're in the UK or Oz, you will understand that. Remote central locking to undo the lid. Um, oh, you do have to move the armrest out of the road in order to lift the lid all the way up. And look, it's a pretty sizable rear boot trunk top box, whatever you want to call it. Under that carpet mat is the CD player and where a CD exchanger would go. I don't have the CD exchanger. I've just put a little compartment in there um, that I put odds and sods in, a couple of bottles of water. That's a little inverter for charging my heated gloves. There's a couple of 12 volt outlets there and it does have heated grips, but the heated grips only warm the, the palms of your hand. And on those really cold days, the top of your hands do get pretty cold with long distance touring. I'm not sure what the literage is um, of the rear compartment, but it is enough to fit my two full face helmets just, and they'll get in there. Actually, we'll have a look at that. Both these helmets are modulars, so they're a reasonable size helmet. They're the Shoei Neotech 2, um, and they do have the vents on top. That's a medium that I've got in the box already, and you just, this is a large, I can just wriggle it down in and it gets down in. I could take the carpet out, but I don't need to. Um, the lid comes down, I think it just touches the top of them, but not enough to pose a problem. Pull the little lever, up it comes. It doesn't leave a lot of room for anything else in the top box, I might add. Oh, you've got a little spot there and there that you could put gloves, although you could put them in the helmet. But it does what it's meant to do, the trunk. It keeps them out of sight. You don't have to carry your helmet around and they're out of the weather. And while we're looking at storage, the left-hand pannier, you pull that lever that we looked at earlier, the door comes down on a nice little gas strut. There's my coffee cup. And uh, down inside, you've got the tool kit, you've got the books, they're all nicely strapped down. I've got my first aid kit, a few little things. Um, you can't fit a helmet, well, certainly my helmets don't fit in the side boxes, but um, they've got a nice rubber seal, as you can see, around that keeps out the dust and the water. When you close the door and it clicks in, you can see how neat and clean it is. These are narrower than the mirrors, so you don't have to worry when you're filtering through traffic 
There's no levers, no buttons. It just keeps it so tidy on the back of the bike. Uh, one thing, they don't come off. So you don't lift them off and take them into your motel room or uh, when you're camping, etc. So you do have to have the internal carry bags, I guess you call it, for your personal effects. And I think you can buy those on the net where they are custom made to suit the actual pannier itself. But yeah, look, I think they're a really, really neat looking pannier. If I flip over to the other side of the bike, pull that lever, the right hand one drops down. Oh, actually, I've still got a, a heap of stuff in this one. Um, spare gloves and the air pump and my tire repair kit. It actually goes back in behind there to where the tail light is. There's there's quite a bit of storage back inside there. But yeah, look, I think they are an adequate, oh, that's my little cable that I use. Um, so if you're locking your jacket or helmets and, well, helmets not so much, you put them in the top box, but when you're locking your jackets to the, um, to the bike, if you're out and about, you can load a lot of stuff in here that you can't carry on a lot of bikes. But once again, oh, these little things around the outside here, are just to stop the movement and the rattle. They're little rubber bumps underneath some 3M tape. Click it up and uh, once again, a lovely, neat, tidy looking pannier. And a really nifty feature, I think, if you've accidentally left one of your boxes open, you can see the little warning that comes up on the instrument panel here. I've closed the left one. You can see the right hand pannier waving there. I'll close that and then it goes stable. You can see the top box is still open. When I close that, it'll just go back to your normal radio screen. Riding the Goldwing on unsealed roads. Now this road is extremely marbly, as in there are a lot of very small stones on the top. You have to be very careful I have dialed the rear suspension down. I think I've got it down around that, that 12 to 15 mark just to absorb a little bit of the corrugation. But turn the bike into the bend, just lean on the throttle, let the rear step out a fraction. And what I love about this bike is it doesn't have traction control. So my riding style, I tend to steer the bike a lot with the rear of the bike, so I will lean on the throttle. I actually high side my body. I don't lean into the, the turns on the unsealed roads on this style of bike. I lift my body to the opposite side, push the bike across, lean on the throttle, just let the back step a fraction, as I said, drop a gear or two to do that. And look, it's more than adequate. You can sit along at that 60 mile an hour or 100 kilometers an hour with ease. It does it beautifully. If you want to get a little bit adventurous, you're going camping, you can still do a little bit of mild track work. I mean, it's, it's still, it's a motorbike. You've just got to watch your clearance and check that you don't go bottoming the thing out. But it'll go through here. In the sand, you need to use maybe a little more momentum because you wouldn't want to stop with the road tires. But it, it handles it beautifully. It is a really, I just cannot get over how versatile this Honda Goldwing is. This one has foot pegs for the rider and running boards for the passenger. They fold up and out of the road if you need to get them up. Actually, you do need to get them up on the other side when you put down the center stand. Um, I have seen another Goldwing and it had the running boards here as well. I tend to personally like the pegs, but that's a that's a personal thing. The crush bars, I guess you'll call them, that are on this bike. So you've got this one here at the rear and the front crush bars there around the rocker covers themselves. They actually allow you to lay the bike over on the side without damaging any of your panel work here or the rear panniers. Down the back of the bike, this one has been fitted with a tow bar and uh, the previous owner used to tow a trailer. I don't have a trailer to tow behind the bike, but um, who knows, maybe one day I could get a little trailer for it or even a, a little lightweight trailer to tow the motocross bike. It's all wired with a seven pin plug. You've got your Anderson plug here. And I did see one the other day that actually had these chrome droop exhaust tips on it. And I thought that looked quite nice. And from here, you can see where there the handles there for the top box and the two panniers for the trunk. 
uh, all very neat, very tidy, and super recognizable as being a Goldwing. This is an 07 model, and it's a bit hard to see because I'm not in direct sunlight here being under the trees, but it's called Pearl Autumn Orange. And the only reason I know that is a, uh, a viewer stateside, uh, thank you very much, a guy by the name of Perry, actually sent me through the details on the color of this bike. And it's, um, there were only 300 made in this color in uh, 07, so um, that's sort of a nice thing. But it is just such a lovely color when you get it in the sun. And if ever you're looking for your paint colour, the colour code is underneath the fuel flap there. There's a little sticker that tells you the, uh, the number that is your paint colour code if ever you have to do some paint matching. If you're already a Goldwing owner, I would love to get your feedback in the comments section as to what you think of your Goldwing and your ownership experience. Um, yeah, that would be great for potential buyers looking at this review. Fuel tank capacity wise, it's 25 litres. I think that's about six and a half US gallons. That should give you a range of a couple of hundred miles or a, a little over 300 kilometres. And that's up in the, I would say, mid to high 30s miles to the gallon US wise, or if you want to talk miles to the gallon, um, Oz or UK, that would be mid 40s, I would say. I'm burning about six to six and a half litres per 100 kilometers. So it's not the most economical bike in the world, but you know, I think it has earned the right not to be. This is a 900 pound or a, a little over 400 kilogram motorcycle. It started life in the, I think it was mid to late seventies as a naked thousand CC bike. It has gone on to become one of the most luxuriously appointed, recognizable bikes in the world. It just swallows freeways, highways motorways, interstates, it really doesn't matter. If you're into large capacity motorcycles, I think you need to experience at least once in your life what it is like to own and ride a Goldwing. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. Look, hopefully you enjoyed the review. If you did, don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, it helps the channel. Uh, but until next time, cheers. No, not now. Maybe a little bit later we'll go for a ride.